Hey everyone, so it's a time for the Square Enix uh, showcase. Um, there was little bits and pieces here and there for their show. Um, little bits to get people excited. If you're into Square Enix games, I'm sure you'd be very excited. Uh, first mention though is the lack of any Final Fantasy 7 news or any other further Final Fantasy news at all. It's kind of kind of poor really. No, kind of not, not really anything massive. I mean, there's it mentions for Final Fantasy XIV to be fair, I and mean, we'll go into that in a second. But um, no new like mentions of any new like Final Fantasy games to come or anything like that. But um, lots of other potential other things in here within what they showed. So let's go through it, shall we? Slowly one by one. Uh, first thing that was shown off was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I already sort of gave you my first sort of pre thoughts on the newest branch of two Tomb Raider games, where I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the, of the, the way they've done the new series, the new trilogy, shall we say. But they showed off some gameplay of the of Lara so far, and they, they gave a, a cutscene of where she's in a plane and the plane crashes in the middle of this jungle, which appears to be the setting of the whole game, uh, like an Aztec jungle, uh, which is very nice, very good. Um, they showed sort of a big part of the stealth gameplay within the game, which is in a darkened jungle and trying to ev evade members of this army have been trying to get her for ages for some reason yeah it, it looks it looks good it looked like they've shown off quite a lot there and i'm looking looking forward to giving that one a go um very dark and dingy but it's, it's also it seems a bit funny in the way it's just very similar to other games and i'm a bit worried it's a bit too much copy and pasting from other games it is very much sort of like metal gear solid meets like other generic sort of third person shooters and things it was it's just really annoying it was, i just i don't like the way the tomb raider's gone from this but it, it looks great and it looks like a good game i just don't like i said before i just don't appreciate it as a tomb raider game i just i feel, I feel it's like veered off completely from what it was and what it, what it could be this this is a triple a title now and i think it's going to do well from what they've shown so far so next uh final fantasy 14 is having lots of updates um they've got a new patch called under the moonlight which will be coming very soon um, we've got a big, big crossover event coming as well, which is very, very interesting to me. Um, Monster Hunter World, one of my favourite games on the Xbox uh, this year. Probably my favourite game of the year, if I'm honest. Uh, there's been a lot of great games so far, but I think that's really hit out of the park at the start of the year. And um, there's more updates to come. Final Fantasy XIV and Monster Hunter World are having a complete crossover where Raphalos and Palkios are going to Final Fantasy XIV. And... In return, the Monster Hunter World, we're getting Behemoth and Cactar, the little cactus dude that's in all the Final Fantasy games. I hope, for, I hope for God that he is a, a costume for the Capalchio. That'd be so cool. I'd love it so much. I think this is a good move. I think more. I've, Monster Hunter has been like, quite famous for having lots and lots of crossovers with different game franchises and things. Uh, I know they've had in previous events they've had uh, like Sonic the Hedgehog, Palkio costumes. They've had like Star Fox stuff. They've had uh, in the recent one in, on the Monster Hunter World. They've had a Ryu uh, costume and set to use, and they've also had from Devil May Cry. They've had Dante's uh, out like outfit and costume to wear as well as part of the events and things. The more events, the better, I think, for Monster Hunter. They, they, it definitely gives you that extra something to do in the game and more content to unlock and, and play with, which is really cool, which is really nice. And you can still play with lots of it online as well, which is nice. Let's come in summer 2018, so I expect it like around all, end of August, maybe early August, because uh, that's normally what happens when they say summer 2018. But let's 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 wait and see. Maybe they'll put batch help pretty early, and I'll be very surprised. But let's see. Let's wait and find out. Yeah, so they had another brief like montage for the Captain Spirit, which is the like uh, sub part of Life is Strange. I say it's like an in betweeny rather than an actual next episode kind of thing. Um, if I've never played Life is Strange, as I, I'm completely out of this, I've heard it's a really good game, um, but I'm, I've never played it. Uh, but this this particular uh, thing, that awesome adventures of Captain Spirit, is available 100% free and coming 20, June 26th, 2018. So very soon, and you'll be able to give that a go yourself. If you're into Life is Strange, maybe it's something you'd be looking forward to picking up. Next was shown was Dragon Quest XI Echoes of Elusive Age, which is basically the original like, classic games. Uh, it's been shown off again. Um, looks looks beautiful in design. Very sort of Dragon Ball art style sort of sort of ideas. It's good. To, it's good to see that another classic series getting more like a modern overhaul altogether. So I'm quite happy with that and how they're doing. I definitely think it's one to watch. Cause I'd, I'd like to see a bit more 
in terms of gameplay being shown but because there wasn't a lot of gameplay in this this particular video a few little cutscenes and things that are cool and it, it is very beautiful looking game so hopefully they can build on that from, from the future uh, it's coming 4th of September available for pre-order now with some DLC bonus and I've got to mention the uh, the massive massive collector's edition for this game I, I, I don't know how much it's going to cost people but it's absolutely huge there's just so much going on in that thing like little, little tokens and posters and it's worth a look but if you can find out how much that is for me I'd be interested to know because that's crazy and that effort gone in to do that um, not mentioned with that was just America Europe or, or, or Japan so hopefully we can find out soon uh, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius is getting more Dragon Quest content to celebrate well early September uh, I've not played that either so I don't know much more than that so if you like that game you might like that as well there you go, sorry, not much more I can say. And Babylon's Fall was announced, which was a random trailer of some night dudes fighting I've written in my notes here. Um, didn't really understand what was going on, just some random things going on, swords fighting, stuff like that. Uh, made by Platinum, which is the only thing of any note to this actual preview, and it's coming 2019 to PS4 and Steam. There's not really anything there other than a title really, so Wait, wait and see, I guess. Uh, coming to Xbox, we have Nier Automata, which is becoming as God Edition. Um, very sort of Bayonetta DMC sort of looking game. Uh, I believe it's a very old game and they've remastered in, into this feature here. I've never played Nier either. I've not played a lot of these games ever. It's really poor. I'm sorry about that, Square Enix. I will try my best to get, play some more of your games in the, in the next year. Promise, promise. Definitely picking up Kingdom Hearts though. Oh, spoilers. Yeah, so this game looks cool though. Um, if you are into that sort of thing, uh, into sort of random generic battlers uh, over crazy amounts of enemies and things like that, you, you might enjoy this. Um, yeah, come in 26th of June 2018, so not very long to wait and something to play over the next couple of weeks. Cool. Uh, Octopath Traveler, a very, very brief video was shown for this. Um, loads of like character classes were sort of briefly talked about in the, in the fact that you could do this, 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 this. Pretty much just like that. A uh, few of the bosses were shown off, a few like, sort of gameplay aspects of the game, and then they just said, uh, coming July 13th, exclusive to Nintendo Switch. So nice to see an exclusive from Square Enix coming to the Switch. Cool. Uh, Just Cause 4 was also pretty, pretty briefly, well, I say briefly, it's a fairly long part of the whole uh, presentation altogether, but um, it was all set in South America. So they've got like a fictional city called Solis, so very like, weird sort of uh, like setting straight away. Uh, but they they used extreme weather as a feature within the game, such as like tornadoes, electrical storms, uh, sandstorms, and things like that, and lots of like sandbox opportunities within the game to do whatever you want to do in the game. So that you can try different things and see see how things work. So if, if again, I've never played a Just Cause game. This is getting a really really bad showing from me. I'm really sorry, guys. But um, yeah, I've never really played a lot of these games, and maybe I should really. Um, sorry. So once again, a very another another very 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 brief show from Square Enix. Um, the Quiet Man basically had a guy go in some random alleyway, and three guys come up to him and say, "Oh, you should be around here. I mean, you should be delivering that here." And it was it suddenly it was went, went from like real action video to the actual gameplay. And when it went to switch to the actual gameplay, it was the lowest poly, horrible looking game I think I've ever seen. The whole presentation was well, this was just poor. There's not a lot to show, and it just it says coming more coming in August, and it was like, I I think I've switched off from that. I don't think it was very good from what they presented there. So there wasn't a lot to it. So then we we finally got the big announcement, which we've already heard about in the Xbox conference, which was kind of the problem. With this whole presentation is a lot of it was already showing off in the Xbox conference, so a lot of stuff we've just seen again. Um, but they did show the King Hearts trailer again. Um, but they did show, like, looking into it a bit more in depth on this section. Um, the Frozen World, uh, okay, not for everyone's cup of tea, but um, definitely something that will drag some younger viewers and younger gamers into the game because there's something to be interested in. There's a Tangled World, which also come in and looks, looks I've got to say, graphically looking, this game looks stunning. Absolutely stunning, I think. So, yeah, graphically stunning, but uh, the kind of thing that I sort of was worrying about is, like, it's still kind of weird listening to a different voice actor for Sora, for Sora at the moment. He found maybe it's just because it's been so long since Sora's actually been in a game, <laughs> like like 
properly voiced because I know a lot of the I think I believe the 3DS game wasn't voiced. I might be wrong with that, but I, I'm pretty sure there wasn't much there. And then he's had they had they've had the HD remixes since then, and lots of them had a different voice actor as well. And it's just kind of weird and jarring to sort of hear th this this trailer going off, and it just it sounded kind of weird. There was a problem with the trailer itself actually because there was no. Um, sound effects within the game and no sort of like music effects. I don't know if they were just trying to hide that, and they just had like the, the characters' voices going through some of the scenes, and that was it. And it was very, very weird and jarring the way they sort of did it, and very, very odd, very odd indeed. They showed some shield surfing in Frozen World with uh, using Goofy's shield, the, the big giant shield with Mickey's face on it. Um, it was pretty cool to see that. Um, they maybe they've taken some sort of influence from Breath of the Wild Shield Surfing. Who knows? But um, it looked pretty cool. Like, like something different, I suppose, and some, maybe a new mini game within that. Some of the summons were shown off as well. So we've got uh, Linguini from Ratatouille was, was shown. He was basically in, in Sora's hair, and they were cooking some meal in in a pot kind of thing. And what that will do in terms of the summon, uh, like whether it's an attack, whether it's a heal ability, we don't really know. It wasn't really shown. But very brief and very short shown there. And I believe it was Simba that was shown in the next clip. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it was Simba with a new summon ability. So he sort of jumps up in the air, does like a weird spin, then hits track on. I'm not sure if it was Simba or the Beast or something else like that. So I'm pretty sure it is Simba, but I don't want to confirm because I'm not really sure. So. But well, we'll see. Maybe we'll find out very soon. Once I think World was was shown off within the trailer. Um, Sora's got like a Sora, Go Donald, and Goofy all sort of have like a monster look to the, all three of them. They all got like a different monster thing. Goofy's is horrible. If it, if you see a picture of that horrible face, oh my god, I can't get away from that. It's so so horrible. Um, but uh, Sora's actual monster ability has it seems to have like a yo-yo sort of physics sort of thing to his battling techniques and he sort of throws a yo-yo and keeps coming back and forth back and forth and it, it seemed pretty cool in the, in the sort of battling sort of this way I love the um, the battles um, like the technical abilities in uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 and the fact that you could it had the oh god I'm having to think back now what they call the special mode when the power's up oh my god I don't know I don't know I know that basically Sora got two Keyblades within uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 and he could swing them and do different abilities but it was left like a timed sort of effect and there was more you got through the game as you go through it and I'm hoping that there's more of that sort of gameplay because that, that actual gameplay was so quick and fast and flying through and it really made the game what it was uh, in, in actual like battling ability but I'm just hoping that there's more like that and less like the slow hit because that really did slow the game down from like like wooden like sword effects and things like that. But at the same time, hopefully they go more in depth in what they can do and try these different like areas and try different techniques from from these different areas like like the yo-yo physics for example. Within the Monster Hunter world, we sort was sort of shown Boo, Sully, and Mike from Monster Inc. Uh, so there was lots of that bit in there, and um, they seem to be walking around with Sora, Donald, and the Goofy. Don't don't know whether they'll actually be having in battles or not, or whether that was just shown in the cutscene who knows uh, maybe we'll find out more in the future uh, Wreck-It Ralph World was shown which is getting my mind racing still what all the potential other characters they could add into this this section maybe they could add more Square Enix characters altogether Lara Croft bit of Lara Croft make a little cameo in Kingdom Hearts that'd be pretty cool wouldn't it? Um, maybe we could have we've got loads of Final Fantasy characters already so maybe could, they could try Dragon Quest characters or Oh, I don't know. Something else from one of the other games they've got coming up. I don't know. I think it's something. Maybe something will come up. But they could also do cameos and things with other people. And I really want to see if Ryu gets in here. And, and Ryu and Ken as actual characters. Are to maybe they're just NPCs. That'd be pretty cool. But I, we have to see. We have to see how that goes. Organisation 13 also return. And it seems like the, the whole plot and story of the game is the re returning in Roxas, which is uh, Sora's nobody. Like thing which was announced shown in the second game, he was like the main protagonist you start as in that game, and you sort of have to battle through for a few hours in this, this weird town, and then all of a sudden you realise that you're actually trying to just save Sora and things like that. But he goes off and disappears from that point on, and then there's no real sort of plot point to that, so unless you played other games, maybe there's something else I've missed. Probably, <laughs> I don't know how, how convoluted this story is in different games and different places. 
it, it's frustrating, but it, but uh, it is great. It's a great game series, to be fair, and it, it's just the fact that they put it onto different consoles and not I can't play some of them, you know, so things like that. And the uh, one of the last sort of sections they showed off Mickey being in a dark and like bubble hole thing, and he was talking to another character who seems to be maybe the one of the bad guys, or girls in it. So. That, that hopefully that will be more, more explained as we go into the, the actual plot of the game. So uh, there's quite a bit there shown on off of uh, King Hearts 3. It look, like I said, it looks absolutely stunning and I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. It's probably one, one of my must-haves within the next... Well, it's come up in January, so definitely looking forward to that one and it's definitely a must-have to get. And that was pretty much it, to be honest, for Square Enix. There was, there was a fairly a good amount of stuff there, um, but not quite enough to, in some of those parts to say, oh, this is this is a really good show and here it is it's, here's the whole thing there's just two games there they didn't show barely anything and it was just really frustrating and annoying for some people and the fact that, that some of the other um, some of the other parts of that they've already shown in the Xbox uh, showcase like Nier and uh, King Hearts 4 for example was already shown off in that um, we already knew about Octave Traveller coming to Switch um, I think the Monster Hunter stuff was, was a surprise but it was nice to see and Shadow of the Tomb Raider nice to see some extra good gameplay for that but like I said I'm not really that interested in playing it unless it's, it turns out to be a fantastic game I don't know but yeah other than that there's not really much more I can say about Square Enix it, it wasn't the, the worst but it wasn't the best showing I think they could have done but um, hopefully there's some more games to come in the future from them and uh, we have to wait and see how it goes uh, thanks very much everyone for tuning in and if you are interested in seeing more of my videos why don't you subscribe down the bottom there so you can see all my future endeavours and things like that. Um, I've still got the Nintendo and Sony conference to do, I've also got the Ubisoft one still to do as well so I'm hoping to get those out as soon as possible within the next day or two hopefully. Um, but they, it's just taken a bit of time, I had a bit of a break yesterday because I, I was so tired from watching all these conferences and and going to work and coming back and cycling home and things like that and just lots of things got, got in the way and then I saw the, the cutest cutest fox come back to our garden the other night so I had to record him and I put that video up uh, earlier today please, please check it out it was really cute if you stay right to the end I know it's a long video it's like a 10 minute video but if you if you sort of skip to like the last minute or so you'll see him walk from walk from our garden into like a pond and accidentally fall into the pond which was quite funny so <laughs> um cheers for sticking on to the end and as for that thank you very much and if you like the video like the video if you dislike just leave a dislike hit the sub button and i will love you and leave you and catch you for now ciao for now bye bye